Hi everyone, Affinity Photo. What a great alternative to Photoshop it is. Over the next few months, I'm putting together a series of guides on my YouTube channel for you. I've got loads planned, so do subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications when fresh uploads go online. Once you've seen one of the videos, if you want to skip this intro, then just check the timestamp down below in the description and you can go straight to the tutorial. Here in Affinity Photo, if you go up to the main menu and under Affinity Photo, just click and go to Preferences in the drop down menu. Here you'll find all of the preferences, so we're going to go through these and we're just going to try and spend five minutes on the whole lot. At the end, I will actually bring up all of the panels for you and highlight where you need to make the changes. So here we go with General. And this is really simple because this just comes in as default and I leave that as it is. And the only other thing is you may want to change language down here. But that's default, that won't show on the end screen. Back up to Preferences again, over to Colour. This is the really important one. To that top line, if you're going to do printing at any point, then make sure that is Adobe RGB. That may well come in as sRGB and Adobe RGB will give you more color space and you really want to maximize your colors. But it is also important that your camera is set for Adobe RGB so it's also recording the colors otherwise it's, there's no point at all on that. So Adobe RGB here and in your camera. Um, I don't think many people are doing 32-bit, it's more like 16-bit these days but um, if you want the highest and your printer can deal with this then I'd put Profoto in there. Just check these here and just make sure these are the same as well. Grayscale here and rendering intent comes in as several options and there's a lot of talk about what to use here and for me when I'm printing I do move generally between perceptual, relative and absolute and make sure that happens at the printing stage but leave at absolute color metric is fine while you're working and make sure black point compensation is also ticked there. But we really want to look at that in printing. Everything else can stay as default really there. Over to performance. This is going to be down to your machine. So just check how your RAM usage is likely to be. And also disk usage. Also you may want to change your undo limits really. But it's really these three here that you need to change. And that will depend on your machine. Over to user interface. So you can change your background grey levels here. And if you do use the artboards, you've got the ability to do that here. I don't do that, but some people will. And this just really changes the overall uh, brightness of the whole interface here. And I just leave that at default. If you need larger font sizes, I've got them set for larger here because that helps with training. Um, but that's the default and you can go large. And you've got also the options of the light interface or you've got dark or the default for your operating system as well. I use the dark interface because it kind of replicates uh, my settings for both Lightroom and Photoshop. Everything else I keep as default but just make sure down here that we have show brush previews and I always like to have the crosshair showing as well and this is where I have the setup to make everything look a lot closer to Photoshop. I have the icons set for monochrome and you can see I've just pulled them to colour here but tick that and it will look a lot more like Photoshop and I've actually put these in the order of Photoshop as well. And over to tools and I leave these as they are as they come in but I do have large set again really for training purposes. With keyboard shortcuts you've got the ability to put your own shortcuts in if you wish and there are lots of shortcuts already built in. You select your personas up here then you can look at the menu items and the tools. If you want to change any of those, you just go down to the bottom here, select what you need, click the X to get rid of it, click in the box and then add a new shortcut purely by typing on the keyboard. Most people will leave these as they are though. This is where the plugins are. And the main thing is that I would have allow unknown plugins to be used. The reason is I use Silver FX Pro sometimes and I have an older version and that still works in Affinity Photo but it does come in um, with some of these NIC filters as unknown 
and if you don't have that ticked it may not work this is where you add and remove them if you have got any other plugins this is the window you need to use software update I just have as a check for updates daily so whenever I open up affinity it's going to just do a little check for me nice and simple that one and then miscellaneous which is really a default but basically if things start to go wrong with your layouts or you've been changing some things around and that will get you back to square one and that's all it is on the preferences really so this is for the beginner and really if you're a more advanced user you may want to go in further and look at these in a little bit more depth making sure in particular you get those color settings correct here are all the settings for you that I've highlighted the main areas to look at changing if you need to. I will put a timestamp in the description below so that you can just look down and go straight to this area and check your settings. So there's performance, color, plugins, tools, that's the software update, miscellaneous, general, shortcuts and the user interface if you need to change any of those just come back to this section of the video or you may want to just take a screen grab as well i will put a link to a file of all of these for you in the description below and if you want to download those you'll be able to do that don't forget to subscribe and also hit that bell button because you'll get a notification when I upload more information on Affinity Photo. I've got a lot of these to do, going to probably be around about 20 different videos because I want to keep them nice and short for you. Something like 5 to 10 minutes long is all I'm aiming for and that will help you move at your own pace as you go through the early stages of Affinity. Also don't forget to give me a thumbs up for a like and that will be really useful. Many thanks.